March is a historic month with Pluto shifting into Aquarius, Saturn to Pisces, and they together are going to open up a portal, the portal of transitioning from the age of Pisces to the age of technology, interconnectedness, equality, and humanity, also known as the age of Aquarius. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In this video I'm going to talk about the signature month of March which begins with shifting into the more and more apparent transition between these two great cycles. I'm going to talk about how this might affect the whole of humanity globally and then on the second part of the video, I'm also going to break it down to all 12 signs. Now, March is undoubtedly the most important month of the year. It is a fresh start, astrologically speaking, because astrology does not follow the Gregorian calendar, right? The new cycles are going to be kicking in in March with these two great planets, and also Mars is going to change sign. And in the top of that, on the 21st of March, we will have the spring equinox, which is always the astronomical and the astrological new year when the sun reaches the zero degree of Aries. But let's start with the smallest planet that is shifting. So Mars is going to uh, leave Gemini for good uh, and it has been there since uh, last year, August, has caused lots of havoc by uh, going retrograde in the sign of Gemini, by um, squaring Neptune three times during this phase. And uh, so probably many of us will be just kind of relieved to have a little bit of break from Mars. So around the mid months, if you have planets around the 25th degree of mutable signs, expect some overreaction, defensiveness, uh, expect some wannabe protecting your rights, speaking up. It could be a time of rupture uh, when you want to stand up uh, for yourself or you might end up um, fighting for your debates in arguments uh, you might end up feeling disoriented somewhat or overwhelmed where things are not going as uh, you plan them out there is a time of possible chaos as well with natural disasters due to water earthquakes and hurricanes neptune square mars is an aspect when we are losing control especially if you're not coming from the right intention. It is the aspect when we are feeling deflated as though we cannot go really, really far. The next big move is going to be Saturn moving into Pisces. And with that, creating a closure for a 30 year cycle that is natural, that is the natural cycle of Saturn's movement around the ecliptic. But due to Pluto's ingress into the sign of Aquarius, Saturn also cutting ties, a closure for a great era, a cycle that we all know as the age of Pisces. Saturn does a wonderful circle in the zodiac within 30 years. So entering into this watery sensitive sign, it marks a time of withdrawal, reflection, when bring, trying to bring order to the chaos. It marks a time of retreat, getting ready, transitioning into a brand new 30 year cycle to come. Just think about it when you move a house or you move um, from one workplace to the other, or when you move, if you've ever done it, moved from one country to the other, how long that period takes. Of course, these things are not happening overnight. We're not going to step into the age of Aquarius overnight either. This process has begun ages ago. I will 
explain later into the video uh, how long ago that really has began. But Pluto's ingress into the zero degree of uh, Aquarius, it is really the birth, the opening of that portal, which is still only the transitioning time. Now, we know Saturn as Kronos, the Greek god that teaches us limits. It teaches us the time. It teaches us about material things, brings responsibility. But the ultimate goal of Saturn really is to create a shape, a structure, a strong foundation where we can manifest into the material world. On the positive note, Saturn in Pisces can help with manifesting, with grounding, to master our spiritual goals and mystical experiences, our psychic and intuitive gifts, and to put these dreams into a material form, to ground them into our very being. But before all of this will happen, Saturn will do its tests. It will test certain traditions, leadership, structures, foundations. And with that, naturally, cracks will show up. So dissolutions of certain systems, certain foundations are going to inevitably take place. Saturn often stands for the traditional, the patriarchal, the capitalism. Many of us astrologers, uh, when we want to predict forward, we always look at what happened in previous Saturn cycle periods. We look at the history, because history often repeats itself, even if it's not exactly how it was, but the themes are very, very similar. So in some previous Saturnians uh, in Pisces cycles, in, uh, for example, between 1935 and 1938, Saturn in the Pisces cycle happened during the Great Depression in the United States. Now, this was happening due to the stock market crash in 2029. Very similar scenario, right? But it's not quite the same. Now, Pisces on the negative side can be... Um, something to do with the collective unconscious, the collective subconscious. And Saturn can be fear, repression, control, limitation. So there is a chance that Saturn will uh, cut us off from trusting our intuitive energies, bring us into this fear of the collective subconscious, the psychic junk that we don't even want to look at. This perhaps was the mindset during the Great Depression in 1935 Saturnian cycle. Now, in that Saturnian cycle, the alcohol anonymous has happened, which is a very much a Piscean team. Any alcohol and drugs is connected to Pisces. Now, the death of King George and the abdication of Edward VIII is also happened. And of course, after that was followed by an unexpected king, which was Queen Elizabeth's father. Spanish Civil War happened that time around as well. Now, in the next Saturn in Pisces um, cycle, in 64, between 64 and 67, Nelson Mandela went to jail. Martin Luther King won the Nobel Peace Prize. And the Civil Rights Act happened as of 1964. The next Saturn in Pisces cycle happened between 94 and 96. And perhaps some of you might even remember that. This is the time when the uh, Rwanda genocide happened, the Berlin Wall came down, the apartheid ended, and Mandela became a president. So how interesting that um, the Mandela's... Um, cycles are all happened during the Pisces, Saturn in Pisces cycle. Now, why do I think that this Saturn in Pisces cycle is going to be all about transitioning into the age of Aquarius? Pluto will ingress on the 23rd of March uh, to Aquarius. 
but it doesn't really stay there for a long time. It is only going to dip his toe into Aquarius and by 11th of June, it's going to be out of there. It will backtrack to Capricorn once again. Next year in 2024, Pluto will stay for further eight months in the sign of Aquarius and fully it will only ingress into Pisces in 2024, end of year, the year 2024. So this shows also that there is a time of transitioning. There is a time of transitioning with even the preparation to move into the age of Aquarius, because that's what Pluto is going to do in the sign of Aquarius, okay? Pluto will be um, in the sign of Aquarius all the way to 2024. So that's roughly, we are talking about 20 years, okay? But let's see, when do I think really the dawn of Aquarius has begun? I believe this was way back in the previous Pluto in uh, Aquarius cycle. That was 240 or 260 years ago, roughly. This was the time when the French Revolution happened. And the first real Aquarian themes, such as fraternity, liberty, um, equality, and the abolishing of the French monarchy has happened. Now, this has happened in Aquarius because uh, Leo is exactly opposite to Aquarius and Leo is the sign of the kingship. And when Pluto got to Aquarius, the French rebelled and they said, no more, no more monarchy. We are the people. We are going to create the democracy, uh, the republic. And we are not going to let ourselves led by kings who don't even know what our real needs are, okay? Just remember Marie Antoinette who said, let the mink eat cake. And this was the dawn of Aquarius. And later on in 1914, after the first world war between 1914 and 1918, the second, a big step or big wave, a big activation of Age of Aquarius has begun. And this was the abolishing of yet another monarchy, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. After that, uh, it was a bit of a quiet in teams of Aquarius. And in 2020, something huge has happened again. The Great Conjunction, which is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, has happened on the zero degree of Aquarius, exactly on the degree where Pluto is going to move on the 23rd of March. Now, this is a uh, very significant, not only because it is on the zero degree of Aquarius, which is again, the beginning thing, but also because it happened on the winter solstice. And let me also mention that according to uh, many astrologers, uh, the great conjunctions are the best astrological clocks. They are the most reliable yardsticks to measure history. Now, this is also significant, although the Jupiter and uh, Saturn, the great conjunctions, they usually are uh, marking a 20 year period. But this particular one on the zero degrees of Aquarius on the winter solstice, which is the astrological, you know, time shift, really. As I said, it's not the Gregorian calendar that we are going after. This is also um, marked a time when it's closed. Uh, the Great Conjunction have closed a 200 year period when the Great Conjunction uh, happened in Earth signs and they opened up another 200 year period when the great conjunctions are going to happen in air signs. So can you see how we are moving from the earth quality? The earth is uh, the material aspect of life. We are moving into the air quality, which is uh, the social, the information, the communicative, uh, the technological, uh, 
kind of air quality. As the time getting closer and closer, we are getting more and more activations, right? So this year on the 21st of August, that zero degree of Aquarius yet again was um, triggered. It was triggered by the new moon in Aquarius, which happened just one little degree away on the first degree of Aquarius. Uh, yes, this happened on the 21st of January. And if you um, if you are aware of uh, at least a, a little bit about the moon phases, you know that with the new moon, there is always a new beginning. Equally, with the zero degrees, there is always a new beginning. And the slower the planet moves, the greater the era that it begins for us. Yes, Pluto's ingress into the, uh, into the zero degrees of Aquarius, it will mark the point when this portal, the portal of transitioning from one era to the other is actually opening up for us. And you guys, what better transition is from the age of Pisces, moving into the age of Aquarius, closing the cycle with Saturn in Pisces. With Saturn in Pisces, we have to face our karma, not only for the last 30 years, but for the last 2000 years. Imagine all the psychic junk it will come up. Just recently, I moved uh, countries and I moved house, and I only lived in that house for seven years. It was beyond belief of what I had to clean out. I'm sure that many of you have had um, the same experience. So you know exactly now after this 2000 year period, there's going to be a lot to face. There's going to have to be a lot of elimination to be done. So I believe within two and a half years, uh, there's going to be major, major, major shifts and major changes through this transitional phase for us to be ready, for the human consciousness to be able to shift from one type of thinking to a different one. So there has to be a lot of testing, lots of reflection, and lots and lots of elimination to be done. And these have to be done with regards to religion, that's Pisces, with regards to your leadership, government system, structures, capitalism, it, we have to have a look at the state of the ocean. That's Pisces, right? The livestock, the fish in it. We have to have a look at the healing, the medical industry, the pharmaceuticals, the drugs and the correct use of it, the alcohol and the correct use of it, the movie and all imaginative industries and the correct use of it, such as adult film industry as well. But the biggest thing we have to have a look at is our beliefs and our faith, because that are the themes of the age of Pisces. Now, in the age of Pisces, our belief system was that we have masses and these masses have to follow leaders and saviors. Now, during the time of the American and the French Revolution, in the previous Pluto in Aquarius, um, people used to follow leaders and kings and rulers who were put there by divine right, such as kings and queens and priesthoods. These were allowed to believe that they were better than, uh, than all of us. They were better than all of the humanity. And they had come, their era had to come to an end because they completely are lost in touch. Again, I have to just quote Marie Antoinette when she said, let them eat cake. She had no idea how people used to live during uh, that era. So during this transitional period, many people still believe that they have to follow bosses and rulers and leaders. And this created this top-down hierarchy as a, res as a result. 
Now, these beliefs are going to be tested and many of them are going to be illuminated. Because from the age of Pisces, we need to have, the humanity need to have a new type of thinking, a new type of consciousness. We cannot carry uh, these type of beliefs into our Aquarian age, into that new age. So naturally, there will be tests of the beliefs, test of the faith, test of leaderships, cracks will be shown up and dissolution of systems will happen. New raw models will come out, unexpected heroes and leaders such as the unexpected king or Nelson Mandela's turnover from a jail sentence to the leader of the country. Now this will climax uh, with the Saturn Neptune conjunction uh, together with the North Node, which is going to happen three years from now in 2026. That is going to be a huge year, a game changer. Uh, something as big as the uh, as the falling of the Berlin Wall is going to happen. Well, let's just stay in 2023 for now. So Pluto moving into Aquarius, even this year will give us a short sneak peek into what might be unfolding for us in the next 20 years to come. So as I said, it is going to happen on the 23rd of March, which is just about two and a half days away from the spring equinox, which is the rebirth of the Earth, the zero degree of Aries, when everything comes to life again. So that's very significant. That is going to happen on the degree of the Great Conjunction. Yet again, it's very significant. That the Great Conjunction happened again on the Winter Solstice. That is again a very significant. That both of these planets, Pluto and Saturn, are in such a deeply transpersonal sign, such as Pisces and Aquarius. That is again very significant. These two are the last two signs of the zodiac. Okay, that again shows us that we are transitioning from one age to the other. Now, both of these signs are about spirituality and humanity, interestingly enough, but in a different way. Um, Aquarius is more about humanity, equality, and the community, whereas Pisces was all about compassion, unconditional love, and yes, uh, the, the saviors and the leaders by divine right. Now we all know that Pluto is uh, the planet of transformation, and Pluto likes to try and transform through digging and unearthing deeply buried issues. So the transformation with Pluto always happens through crisis, catharsis, and purification. Now, have you had any detox done ever in your body? Then you know how this uh, could be a cathartic um, experience because our body and our mind is full of toxins. So first we have to bring them up in order to be able to eliminate them. Pluto came here to purify this very human sign the sign of humanity, right? The sign of future goals and wishes. So naturally, Pluto will dig and unearth and exposes some toxicity and will eliminate them, will destroy everything first and then will reconstruct and will rebuild. So naturally, Pluto has to do and is going to purify every aspect of Aquarius in the next 20 years to come. And uh, don't you agree that we need a huge cleanup, a huge transformation? Look around the world. The world is overpopulated. The money and wealth of the earth are, are controlled by a few thousands, whilst millions are going hungry and dying of hunger. The oceans are dirty, full of plastic. There's literally more plastic in the ocean than fish in a minute. The landfill is filled with toxic materials. 
people are working overusing uh, the ore of the earth and we are running out of it everything is controlled by patriarchal corporate leaders top-down hierarchical governments institutions our basic human needs are not satisfied by the old systems many corporate environments institutions we all have to work in it doesn't allow to live a decent balanced life we don't have a healthy work-life balance we don't have to go to india or to africa to see that this is happening in europe in the uk everywhere i remember when i uh, i used to work on a customer based business and i was already dealing with customers for two hours and i asked my supervisor if i could have a glass of water and guess what he said? He said, no, I cannot. I need to wait till I be taken off by somebody else. I remember I worked as a teacher in a school and they, they shut the door so I couldn't go to the toilet uh, on the easy route. I had to go all the way around. Um, and when I brought to them a doctor's note that uh, they need to provide me with easy access to the toilet due to kidney problems, they just laughed at my face. Yes, these are happening in Europe now. So I believe Pluto has got to do a lot with all that. Of course, nothing is perfect. And so our new age will not be either. There will be overemphasis in technology. There will be fights against what's uncontrollable. There will be chips in our brain. <laughs> there will be uh, lots of Madonnas who don't want to age and they probably will manage not to age either. Um, there will be robots taking over our human jobs. But also this might give rise for people to find better ways of earning, to work for themselves, to live in communities, to work from home, because they will realize that by working for themselves, they can make a better way of living rather than working for greedy factories, institutions, corporate businesses, where the basic human rights for our needs are not met. The new era that Pluto is getting ready for us for is going to begin with a big spring cleanse. It's going to be about less about the material focus. It's going to be more about humanity coming together, being interconnected, creating our new communities. I can see cities and villages already turning out like that. In Hungary, there is a little village that are completely independent from all authorities, energy-wise, food-wise, um, maybe even social services-wise. I can see futuristic um, cities are being created already in Saudi Arabia, um, a city called Line. Um, of course, this is due to uh, the global warming as well. Nevertheless, it's going to be a brand new community. With Saturn moving into Pisces, we have to cut all the ties that we have had because we are closing a Pisces 2000 year chapter. With Pluto in Aquarius, we are opening a brand new 2000 year chapter. The shift from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius will be corresponding with shifts in worldly power, with shifts in the old systems, economics, and of course, the belief systems as well. The portal is opening. Are you ready?